A major new escalation in the Middle East. Tonight, Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. It involves dozens of drones launched from Iranian territory. And tonight, America is giving an ironclad guarantee it will stand with Israel. Israel's war cabinet has decided to hit back forcefully against Iran for its missile and drone attack on Saturday night. Israeli officials recently shared a message they think is very important and a bit scary. They say a prophecy is getting closer and they want the world to pay attention. They even gave a final warning, making people worried about what might happen in the future. This prophecy is not new. It's been part of many religions like Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Zoroastrianism. It talks about the coming of a special leader often known as a messiah. Israel, where these religions started, is crucial in making this prophecy happen. However, not everyone agrees with this, and there's been strong opposition. The prophecy is a big deal in debates among religious scholars and followers. So, what is the prophecy about? In this video, we tell you everything about the terrifying prophecy and the battles that Israel is currently facing with Iran, shocking religious people worldwide. Israel's story began with Abram, a man of 75, who listened to God's call. He started a journey to Canaan with his wife Sarai and nephew Lot. Their arrival in the Promised Land faced challenges, with Canaan already home to tribes like the Hittites and Amorites. Canaan was a mix of tribes with unique cultures and beliefs, coexisting through farming and trade. Abram's relationship with the Canaanites was a mix of friendship and trouble, yet they kept going to make Canaan their home. The importance of Israel's land is vast and deep. It holds significant historical, cultural, and religious value for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Jerusalem, its capital, is revered as the Holy Land, containing sacred sites such as the Temple Mount, the Western Wall, and Mount Zion. For Christians, Israel is intimately linked to the life of Jesus. In Islam, it is seen as a place of importance connected to Isa, one of Allah's messengers. Throughout history, Israel has seen the rise and fall of empires, from the Assyrians to the Babylonians. Around 1000 BC, the Israelite tribes united under King Saul, leading to the building of the first temple by King Solomon on the Temple Mount. However, the kingdom's split and later takeovers have shaped its complex history. In 722 BC, the Assyrians captured the Northern Kingdom, and in 586 BC, the Babylonians took over the Southern Kingdom, leading to the destruction of the first temple. The return of Jewish exiles marked the Second Temple period under Persian rule. In the first century CE, Christianity emerged with Jesus, but the Romans destroyed the Second Temple in 70 CE. These historical events, along with religious texts and archaeological findings, have deeply influenced the Jewish people's identity. In the 1920s and 1930s, Jewish immigration to Palestine led to tensions with Arab communities, sparking clashes due to conflicting goals in the region. The rebirth of Israel and the Declaration of Independence on May 14, 1948, mark significant milestones in its modern history. David Benan proudly announced the founding of the State of Israel, acknowledging the strong connection between the Jewish people and the land of Palestine. This significant declaration, shaped by the memories of the Holocaust, expressed gratitude for international support. Now, let's go back in time to the ancient world, around the 4th millennium BC, imagining the dry landscapes of the Middle East and discovering the earliest traces of Jerusalem, known as Ralim in ancient texts. Throughout history, this city saw the rise and fall of powers, with Canaanites, Jebusites, and Israelites all leaving their mark. Around 1000 BCE, King David played a crucial role in taking control of Jerusalem from the Jebusites and making it the capital of the United Kingdom of Israel. The city prospered under King Solomon's rule, decorated with impressive buildings, including the First Temple, highlighting its importance both spiritually and politically. 
Jerusalem's significance is felt strongly in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. For Jews, it is the most sacred city, where they feel God's presence, especially at the Western Wall. In Christianity, Jerusalem is closely connected to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre serving as an important place of pilgrimage. Islam also holds Jerusalem in high regard as the third holiest city, with Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock being highly respected. Jerusalem's history unfolds with the rise and fall of empires and civilizations, from Israelites to Romans, Arabs, Crusaders, and Ottomans, each leaving their mark. Once a prized possession for conquerors, the city became a hub of cultural exchange. Today, Jerusalem remains a diverse mix of different faiths, divided along religious and political lines. The old city, filled with sacred places, is evidence of its rich history. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict adds layers of complexity, with both sides claiming Jerusalem as their capital. The city's status remains a focal point in peace talks and international diplomacy, reflecting a woven history with ancient roots and modern challenges. Jerusalem's importance in different religions is significant. It stands as a spiritual center, deeply meaningful to Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. The Temple Mount plays a crucial role in this shared reverence, affirming the deep connection to Judaism. In Judaism, Jerusalem holds great importance as the holiest city, deeply woven into the religious and historical identity of the Jewish people. According to Jewish tradition, Jerusalem is where God chose to reveal divine presence on earth. The Western Wall, or Wailing Wall, symbolizes this special connection, where Jews gather to pray, showing their strong bond to God and their ancestors. The Temple Mount, believed to be the site of the first and second Jewish temples, is a respected place for worship and pilgrimage. Christianity also values Jerusalem, closely associating it with the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. The city is closely tied to key events in Jesus' life, including his death and resurrection, as written in the New Testament. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the Old City of Jerusalem is thought to be where these important events happened, attracting millions of Christian visitors worldwide each year. The Via Dolorosa, tracing the path Jesus walked while carrying the cross, is another significant Christian landmark in Jerusalem. To the east lies the Mount of Olives, an important Christian site where believers think Jesus went to heaven. In Islam, Jerusalem is also highly regarded as the third holiest city after Mecca and Medina. The religious importance is grounded in the connection of the Prophet Muhammad with the city. Muslims believe in Muhammad's amazing journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, where he went up to heaven from the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. The Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam, and the famous Dome of the Rock underline Jerusalem's deep significance. The Golden Dome serves as both an architectural and religious symbol, emphasizing the city's importance in Islam. The deep significance of Jerusalem goes beyond religious practices, intertwining with history and geopolitics. This old city, a mix of different faiths, has left a lasting mark on the historical and geopolitical landscape of the region. Jerusalem has been a center of religious devotion, conflict, and desires for sovereignty. Its complex nature, marked by overlapping religious and historical claims, has led to tensions and disagreements among different groups throughout history. Jerusalem has seen the rise and fall of empires and civilizations, from the ancient Israelites and Canaanites to the Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, Crusaders, and Ottomans. This city has been a sought-after prize for conquerors and a lively hub of religious and cultural exchange. Today, Jerusalem remains a city divided along religious and political lines. The old city shows the coexistence of various faiths within a small area with impressive holy sites and winding streets. In the Bible, the story unfolds of Solomon's Temple, 
a grand structure built by King Solomon on the revered Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It stood as a tribute to God from the 10th to the 6th centuries BC, but was destroyed during the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem under King Nebuchadnezzar's rule. The next building, known as Herod's Temple, came about as a sign of faith. At first it was a simple place of worship, but during the time of King Herod the Great, it became much grander. This impressive building stood tall for over 580 years until the Romans came and destroyed it. After the second temple was destroyed, Jewish people strongly wanted to build a third, stronger temple, a holy place better than before. But making the third temple hasn't been easy. Many people, especially from Islamic countries, opposed it because Jerusalem, where it's supposed to be, is also important to Palestine. The complications go on with how Jerusalem is split. West Jerusalem is seen as Israel's capital, while East Jerusalem is Palestine's capital, where the Dome of the Rock is. Despite challenges, researchers looked into the temple's history, raising questions about the old Jewish temple's truth. Underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque, an important Islamic place, was found a mikvah, a Jewish bath, something that surprised many and strengthened the Jewish connection to the area. These important discoveries, hidden away to prevent problems, changed how people saw things. Israeli officials, with historical proof in hand, gave a strong warning. With a clearer understanding of Jerusalem's past, there's now a stronger push to build the Third Temple. Now, the difficulties of constructing the Third Temple arise. Building a new temple means navigating a complex path, especially concerning the revered Temple Mount, known as Haram al-Sharif in Islam. This site is home to the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, making it a religiously sensitive area. Choosing a suitable location involves carefully considering accessibility, symbolism, and the surrounding environment. Obtaining permits and approvals presents a bureaucratic obstacle, with temples needing to follow zoning and regulatory requirements. Working closely with local authorities is crucial to meet legal obligations and obtain necessary clearances for construction. Designing the temple itself requires delicately balancing tradition and innovation. Architects must create structures that reflect the cultural and religious beliefs of the community, requiring thoughtful consultation with religious leaders. The financial aspect poses a significant challenge, with temples relying on donations, Fundraising efforts become vital, requiring engagement with individuals, businesses, and philanthropic organizations to gather support for the sacred project. Emphasizing the project's importance and value aims to encourage potential donors to contribute generously. Constructing the temple itself proves challenging due to its intricate carvings, detailed stonework, and elaborate decorations. Skilled craftsmen and artists are essential, requiring careful selection and verification of their expertise. Using old-fashioned building methods adds another layer of complexity, relying on specific traditional materials. Sourcing these materials, such as special stones or wood, can be time-consuming and intricate. Finding craftsmen with a deep understanding of these traditional materials poses a challenge. Endurance is a key consideration, requiring engineers to design a temple capable of withstanding challenges like earthquakes, extreme weather, and regular wear and tear. Close collaboration between architects and engineers ensures the temple stands the test of time. The Sanhedrin, integral to the temple project, recreates the ancient environment by cultivating farms and forests. However, debates on the authority of the Sanhedrin and concerns about potential environmental impacts arise, adding complexity to the temple's revival. The challenge of building the third temple involves a crucial step, getting a flawless red heifer. This unique animal plays a vital role in purifying Jews, allowing them to take part in temple services. The careful purification process follows the guidance in the Bible, specifically in Numbers chapter 19. Rabbi Chaim Richmond, the former global director of the Temple Institute, is dedicated to bringing a perfect red heifer back to Israel. This is no small task, 
as only nine red heifers were used in purification rituals over a thousand years between the first and second temples, making them extremely rare. Despite their scarcity, Rabbi Chaim Richmond and knowledgeable rabbis from the Temple Institute are committed to overcoming obstacles. They are using modern scientific technology and collaborating with skilled cattle farmers to breed a red heifer. The process involves using frozen embryos from North America's Red Angus cattle implanted into Israel's domestic cattle. Breeding a red heifer is not easy. It must be born in Israel and free from any physical imperfections or flaws that could spoil its perfect appearance. Marks, spots, or abnormalities are not acceptable. Also, the red heifer must not have been used for any work, especially plowing, as it needs to remain untouched and solely dedicated to temple rituals. Rabbi Chaim Richmond's determination has led him to explore ancient books and use various scientific methods in this complex process. It's important to understand that obtaining a red heifer is just one requirement for building the temple, indicating there are more challenges ahead. Another crucial part of preparing the third temple involves training the Kohanim, a special group of priests led by the Sanhedrin and the temple movement. These priests undergo thorough training to understand the proper actions, mannerisms, and equipment usage needed for the new temple. Kohanim play a key role in the temple rituals, and their training ensures they carry out their duties accurately and according to religious standards. The Sanhedrin is dealing with this challenge by working on breeding them using Red Angus cattle, Besides the religious aspects of the temple project, the political landscape around Jerusalem is important. The city, which will house the temple, has long been a focus of international discussions. The building of a new temple has the potential to affect relationships between countries, especially Israel and its neighbors. There's a worry that extremist groups might take advantage of this situation, adding to regional instability. Another important part of this complex process is constructing the new altar, a necessary part for offering sacrifices in the temple. This construction must happen at the original site on top of the revered Temple Mount. The altar's design is strategic, allowing for easy taking apart and putting back together in another place until it finds its permanent spot. This special design accommodates its temporary moving, showing the flexibility needed in the careful planning for the third temple. This flexibility ensures that the altar can be carefully moved to its assigned location when the time is right. Making the altar involves detailed steps and following specific religious rules. The careful efforts put into the altar's design and construction show the respect and dedication with which the Jewish community approaches the restoration of the temple, these careful efforts go beyond the altar to the careful breeding of the red heifer. This special animal, free from imperfections, holds importance in the purification process. The coordination between training Kohanim and making the altar shows the complexity and dedication put into the detailed plan to build the third temple. The Jewish community's strong commitment to building the Third Temple comes from historical challenges, with Muslims currently controlling the Temple Mount, where previous temples stood. Jews face restrictions on going in and worshipping due to this problem, prompting big efforts to create a sacred space for Jewish worship. Orthodox Jews see temple rebuilding as the main answer to problems faced by their community. However, Muslim control over the Temple Mount is a big problem. Taking back this site needs political action beyond legal steps, leading to looking at other ways. Recognizing the deadlock, international groups and countries outside Israel might help find a solution. Working together among leaders of different faiths becomes crucial in understanding the complexities of the Temple Mount. This joint effort is necessary for realizing the rebuilding of the temple, as legal measures alone are not enough. Securing funds for this ambitious project presents a significant challenge. Community-driven temple construction heavily depends on donations, requiring extensive fundraising efforts. Effective communication strategies are crucial to explain the project's importance and encourage generous contributions. 
Traditional building practices face obstacles in today's industry. Many temples stick to old building methods and materials, requiring finding and sourcing specific stones or wood. Working with craftsmen skilled in traditional materials poses a challenge, needing a delicate balance between preserving culture and meeting modern construction standards. Preserving cultural heritage while ensuring structural integrity becomes a major concern. Temples, more than places of worship, are lasting symbols of faith and culture. Apart from the Third Temple, let's take a historical journey to the 8th century BC when King Hezekiah took on a remarkable project, the construction of the Siloam Pool. This ancient water source in Jerusalem played a crucial role in ensuring a constant water supply during times of war. King Hezekiah's builders carved a path through solid rock in an impressive engineering feat, creating the Siloam Pool approximately 2,000 feet from the Gihon Spring. This pool, measuring 53 feet in length, 18 feet in width, and 19 feet in depth, became a testament to human ingenuity and determination. Sadly, the Babylonians' destructive attack on Jerusalem led to the end of the Siloam Pool. It took nearly 70 years during the time of Nehemiah for the city walls and the pool to be carefully rebuilt. This restoration marked a strong comeback from the echoes of destruction during the reign of Herod the Great. The Siloam Pool went through more rebuilding and growth, becoming a place where the poor and sick gathered, seeking healing through its refreshing waters. The Cam Pool held importance during the Feast of Tabernacles, a happy event deeply rooted in biblical teachings. This feast celebrates the Israelites' freedom from Egypt, with the pool's water playing a crucial role in ceremonial rituals due to its closeness to the temple. Feasts like the Feast of Tabernacles hold a special place in Israeli tradition, serving as reminders of significant historical events and the cherished value of freedom. The connection to Israel's cultural and religious heritage established by the Siloam Pool contrasts with the recent escalation of conflict in the Middle East, especially the attacks and airstrikes between Israel and Hamas. These events have posed significant obstacles to potential agreements with the Muslim community regarding the rebuilding of the Third Temple. The violence and loss of life have heightened tensions, leading to global condemnation and calls for a ceasefire. This unforeseen turn of events has deeply affected cooperation efforts, causing delays and shifting the focus away from collaborative endeavors to rebuild the temple. The situation remains complex and the future is uncertain amid the ongoing conflict. What are your thoughts on this unexpected development in the Middle East? It's certainly shocking people worldwide. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more updates.